Good day, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 318, and tonight we have GM Renee Tongson, and I'm really excited to have him on. Uh, if folks, if, if you remember, he was back on before episode 107, so it was definitely well over a year, so much to talk about and all that, and we're going to talk about everything from he's on several chairman on several boards in the Philippines. Um, we're going to talk about it time with um, GM Ernesto and Roberto and to and so on and so forth. So if you're jumping in, tell us where you're watching from, smash that like button. And without further ado, here is GM Rene. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to be back here uh, after a few few months. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I was here a few months ago. Um, yeah, it was I definitely it was the, this year last year. So? I think it was over a year. I think so. It was episode 107. So um, I'm going to guess, yeah. And it was Julius who interviewed you and um, and all that. And it looked like it was a good show with you and Julius. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So I figured, you know, we always like to bring folks back on when it's been a while. And I figured, you know, you were due to come back on. But I, I need to, you know, I, I want to I publicly thank you. You were so gracious and kind. When I first FM started FMA discussion, I mistakenly used you guys' logo without knowing or asking. And you were so, you were so kind and gracious. Where you didn't get mad. You were like, okay, you know, it's you know that. And I, I re and to this day, I really appreciate how you handled that whole situation. You, you know, I thought it was very kind of you. <laughs> so. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, it's it's our usual way. You know, yeah. uh, it's it's not just martial arts. It's not just uh, uh, Filipino martial arts or whatever. It's mm -hmm. uh, how how we build bridges and uh, create um, a good atmosphere of cooperation with everybody. Yeah. So we are not just promoting, um, of course, I, like I said, martial arts. We are promoting uh, friendship here mm -hmm. and bridging the the, the world through through uh, martial arts, of course. So Yo, again, sounds like I you're... would like to thank everyone for uh, FMA discussion, uh, of course, for uh, inviting yeah. me here. So, oh, yeah, you know, it's you. a pleasure to have you. Um, so I want to, um, in, um, so you've trained, just to, you know, get your background, I know Julius probably touched on this, but for folks who might have not seen that episode, again, folks, uh, he was back on an episode, way back, episode 107. Um, in 1966, you started training with Roberto Presas. Yes. And um, and so what was you know so you know what was what was the training like? I mean, like was it a spotty a dagger? Was it other other material? Yes. Um, actually, uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out 66 or 67. I guess I'm very young then. I was barely about nine or ten years old at the time. So mm -hmm. counting today could be somewhere like about 54 years or 53 years, something like that ago. So I started with Roberto at the backyard of the Presas family in Hinigaran Negros Occidental, where I, where I grew up. Um, I started with uh, Abanico Espada Idaga Palis. A palis means a going with the force, it's a style going with the force. It's the style, actually, according to Roberto, the style of uh, uh, Jose Presas, Jose Bunco Presas, the father of the Presas brothers. The yes. father. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's Abanico Palis. It's Padre Idaga. Yes. Okay. Okay. So was there other material that he gave you as far as Roberto was concerned? You know, uh, as far as he's concerned, was it just only focused on uh, Spadi Idaga or was there other weapons? Yes, it's uh, more on on Spada Idaga, and and in fact it was really funny uh, because I did not have a rattan stick at that time when I started, so I was using sugar cane. Yes, yeah. So it's really uh, <laughs> yes. I don't have sticks <laughs> during that time. What do you and use for a knife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, but uh, you see. I going back, 
Um, yeah, I was focused more, Roberto focused more on teaching me Spada Idaga. And, and was... only until after, I think, in 1970, 70 already, when I already started doing a, a solo baston, but it's okay. almost every day okay. Spada Idaga. You know what's interesting is by doing this show, like a lot of coverage on Remy, you know, definitely coverage on Cobatan Ernesto, but rarely do like I hear about Roberto. Like it seems like he was just not. I mean, I, I don't know, but you obviously trained with him in the beginning. And is, is there a reason why his name is is not up there with the other two? Is it because the other two came to America? Do you think that's maybe it? Uh, actually, Roberto is a uh, very, very low profile. Yes. Okay, low uh, profile. Okay. Yes, very low profile. Even until today, um, he he's very selective. He only talks to people who he wants to talk to, although he's friendly. But um, yeah. you know, um, he he has this physical defect in in uh, in his uh, upper lip here. Uh, sorry. So that's hear. probably one of the reason that he's. A little bit uh, shy, oh, no. especially oh, in camera. Oh, yes, and he has uh, a, a speech problem because of the um, uh, how do you call this? A suture out here inside. Oh, the suture. Okay, okay. Yes, so that's probably yeah. one of the reasons. But he's really friendly, very very friendly, and and uh, he, in fact he he cracks jokes uh, more than we do. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, do you see him like every once in a while? Do you get to see him, or? or... Yes, because I still I still uh, visit and go on to Hinigaran uh, at least once every quarter. I was there. I was there uh, last month to to supervise the the construction of the Remy Presas uh, monument in the town plaza of Hinigaran. So it's almost done, and I'm going back there again probably by middle of August to make sure that everything is uh, done. Uh, okay. So because we have this project uh, to to uh, give tribute and and honor to Remy Presas for his work. Mm -hmm. um, so the local government of the municipality of Hinigaran um, uh, erected this uh, monument in in honor of Remy inside oh, the town plaza. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yes. fantastic. Okay. So it's, fantastic. it's a life-size yeah. it, life uh, statue. Life of okay. All right. All right. And um, GM, we got some folks here saying hello. We got we got Mark Colorado. Um, and then we got Julius. You got the yes, Julius and Susie. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hello to Julius. Yes. And yeah, everyone. Roy, Royce Ramos. I love the Northeast. <laughs> oh, God, that's so fun. And, oh, we got GM Bobby Tabata. Oh yeah, Manon uh, Bobby, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. So okay, so that makes sense because I was wondering, like you'd hear about the other two, but like you kind of like Roberto still being alive, like like literal no presence or, or whatever. But it's nice to see that it sounds like you still see him and you talk to him and um and all that. So is he in seventies, eighties? Uh, yes, uh seventy six somewhere like that. I think seventy six or seventy seven. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, um, he has to pardon me because I, I forgot uh, his exact age. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 It's okay. But we know we know he's like mid seventies or so. Okay. So how long did you, you know, you continued to like how many years was it that you trained with him in in his backyard? Mm -hmm. Yes, in the backyard of the of the uh, Presas ancestral home. In, uh, how many uh, years? Ah, really? I stayed with him and. Uh, say 66 or 67 until 1974 I was in Nigeran then I went to Manila to pursue my my uh, my university education so in Manila um, I continued training at, at the uh, gym of uh, Grandmaster uh, Ernesto in uh, Quiapo district in Nigeran this is just a few you can, oh, I, less than less than a mile away from my my university from my school, so I train there again every day. So uh, nineteen seventy four, I think. Yeah. Seventy four, when you went to go to school, and then you started with. Um, okay, so when you started with him, what did um? So was it officially Kobatan then? Whether with... no, there is no Kobatan during the time. We just call it. Uh, it's actually modern Anis. We just, just call it modern Anis. 
just called it Myron Ace. No, no. He okay. Is. Okay. And was he? Did he? Was it? Was it double stick, or was it most emphasis on stick? Uh, during that time, we were more on uh, the single stick, and of course, Pada Idaga and some other interpretations uh, in in uh, other weapons. Like uh, mm -hmm. we we do a lot of of uh, bolo, yes, uh, bolo. live blades, and then we we did. Uh, of course, we also trained the uh, kendo during the time because we say it's Arju Ken, the 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 main organization of uh, of Ernesto during the time in the 70s is Arjuken. So Arjuken. it's the, the uh, uh, how do you call this? Uh, Ar, Ar is Arnis, Ju is uh, uh, Judo, and Ken is Kendo. Yeah, so oh. Arjuken. Yes. Arjuken. So he coined, it, okay. he coined it into one name. So Arjuken Karate Association. It's one of the most popular, popular uh, gym during the time in uh, the Kiapo district in Nigran. And, and uh, uh, and one um, often uh, Roberto also flies to to Manila, and we still continue. I could still continue training under him uh, in, oh, in, uh, in with Nesto's with gym. Nesto. Okay, with the Nesto. Yes, okay. because he flies often. He flies often. Yeah, he would fly up there. Right? Okay, all right. So, um, and so you know, with you getting exposure to both brothers, um, were there differences in their teaching, their methodologies, their approach? Basically, uh, in in the in the classical style or the traditional styles, the same. Basically, the same. It's it's all uh, largo, more largo and and wide stances and and a very busy footwork. So, because the the foundation is the same with with uh, Roberto and and uh, Ernesto from from the brother, but uh, as as we go along, um, Ernesto was was uh, trying to formulate his own system. And, and um, okay. yes, so he was trying to to put, um, you know, the the classical system or the traditional system with the modern anis of of Remy. So, so, so but again, um, I I think uh, everybody would agree me even in in uh, in uh, inside the, our organization, uh, Remy is is so popular. And and uh, Ernesto has to establish his own his own name his his own image. Oh, that makes so, sense. Yes. So sense. he was trying slowly to come up with his own with his mm -hmm. own way his own way of teaching his uh, or his own curriculum. And uh, after a few years in the nineties, that came out with the combatant system. So actually, combatant was never never in the radar before when we were we were starting. Uh, it was just Arjuken. And then later on, uh, I, I was trying to advise him to come up with the umbrella organization because he has the Philippine Kendo Association, uh, he has the uh, Arjuken Karate Association, he has the Modern Anis um, Association of the Philippines, uh, and then another one. Uh, yeah, yeah, these are the three, the, the three where we started before. So I told him come up with an umbrella. Does that think it can it can uh, how do you call this? Um, give a distinct personality for each, a separate yeah, personality yeah, for yeah. each. So we came up with the International Philippine Martial Arts Federation, uh, IPMAF, IPMAF, and until today it's uh, being used by uh, some of his uh, uh, senior students. And from there, we have this uh, in 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 the structure we have this uh, boxes there, and one one is one is still vacant and uh, uh, that is where he put a uh, combatant yes but okay. as it goes along uh, he tried to develop his own curriculum he started with uh, solo baston and then uh, interpreting it to to mano mano that's why he came up with the modern uh, uh, modern anis mano mano uh, association mm -hmm. where he had it until until today, yes, it, and then uh, from there, uh, because of establishing the the curriculum, he focused all of them and put them in combatant. So, from from uh, the combatant as as another association, it became a curriculum. So it became a style. 
So today, most most people, most of his students, when you call when you call them or you you ask them what is that, uh, they will tell you this combatant style or combatant system. Combatant, so from huh? from an association, it became a curriculum. Because it became, it became okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Like I've always heard about Kobatan, but I didn't realize it it stemmed up from an organization and actually became a system. So. Um, yes, but much, but I could see why he would want to kind of come up with a system. I, I guess, at, I mean, at that point, Remy was uh, gaining such popularity with Minor and Knees, yes. it would make sense why I could see Ernesto would want to have his own thing and, and what have you. Um, I got a question here from Julius. Okay, so when you started teaching in the USD University of Santo Tomas, um, the oldest university in Asia, was, was that? A strictly Ernie run thing? That's from yes. or was there Remy involved with that, sir? Yes, it's it's an Ernesto Presa system. Yes. And that, that time we were already starting to to uh, come up slowly with uh, stru structuring a curriculum uh, under Ernesto. And uh, oh yeah, I remember the father of uh, Julius is actually one one of our students in, in, in the university. Yes, the University of Santo Tomas. This is one. This is a very old university, older than Harvard. Yes, very old. Yeah, Julius. Wow. So Julius's father was there. Yes, <laughs> yes. He, he he took lessons under me because I was assistant to Ernesto during the time. So Ernesto would be busy with some other things because he's also teaching other classes there because he's handling the physical education uh, classes of the university. So he has uh, Arnis, and at the same time, uh, he has karate there. And uh, he, he's very busy. So most of the time, I, I handle classes for him there as he's alternate in the university wow. because they allow it. They allow it. So and and, and the Julius' father is one, one of our students there. Yeah, I remember. That's, oh, that's so, oh, that's so neat. That's some good history there, Julius. So, that, so I didn't realize that as far as PE, gym, or classes, our niece was being taught way back then in in the colleges. Yes. yes, in fact, it was mandatory during the time. Uh, I just don't know what happened later part when, because during the time the with during the Marcos time, uh, in 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 the eighties, uh, it it became uh, a regular uh, physical education subject in in uh, in colleges. Yes. In, in tertiary oh, education, so okay, mm -hmm. we just don't know how why it disappeared later on. Right, it, uh, yeah. it, it became it became uh, uh, an elective subject before you have to take it up. It's a physical education one zero one. That means it's a it's a prerequisite. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, later it, I don't know what happened, but uh, it's, it's just part of history. But today now, uh, well, moving forward. Uh, it is now mandatory uh, under um, uh, Republic Act 9850, or uh, it's it's a national law uh, um, declaring Arnis as the national sport and martial art of the Philippines. So it's now mandatory in all colleges, uh, high schools, uh, secondary education, and uh, military, police, and all law enforcement uh, uh, agencies of the government of the Philippines. I mean. So it's fantastic. Now it, it, they're bringing it back, and and slowly, yeah. the schools are starting to implement it because it's I think that's fantastic. Wow, good on them for doing that. I just had no idea back way back in the '80s that it was mandatory in the colleges. Then you know, um, I thought it was much later, like you know, present day, which you just referenced. Uh, but that's fantastic. Um, so did you? Okay, so that's interesting how Cobaton came about. So you're in Manila going to school. Training with Ernesto, sometimes Roberto is flying up. Did you ever get any time or exposure to Remy himself? Yeah, it was very short, very, very short with, with Remy. Uh, because the, the gym of Remy is just about, I think, about 300 meters away from uh, Ernesto's. So I, 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 I crossed there. And uh, even in Igaran, in Igaran, uh, Remy would, would come home in during weekends. Because he stays in, in uh, the main city in Bacolod City, so Hinigaran is about, uh, I think, 40 or 50 kilometers south of Bacolod City. 
So during weekends he goes home, and and uh, uh, once in a while he would say he would butt in and oh you do this you do this do this and then he disappears again. You see him again or maybe next month because he's, that time he's very busy. He's also teaching at the university in in uh, in the main city in Bacolod City. So he's okay. he's, he's hard to he's hard to find actually. It's very hard to find. And then, and then I'm, I'm guessing it's some shortly thereafter is when he he moved to the states, right? Yes, that's uh, in the early seventies already. Because you know, yeah. uh, e even during those times, um, even at my young age, I already I can already read the the uh, how do you call this the four sides or whatever uh, Remy has in mind. He really wanted mm -hmm. to go international. Yeah. yeah, which you did. I mean, no doubt. I've got another question from Julius. So during those UST days, GM Rene, who compromised the cadre? Clearly, it was GM Ernie. You who were the rest. Was it Samuel Babette Dule or Jerry Dela Cruz? Um, the during those times in, in the University of Santo Tomas, the UST, as they call it, uh, under Ernesto, I have with me there uh, now uh, GM uh, Samuel Bambit Dulay, yes, who is now the chief instructor of the International Modernist Federation Philippines, uh, the homeland organization of uh, GM Remy. So, uh, and then uh, Bambit Dulay and then uh, Cristino Vasquez, uh, uh, rest in peace. He's my senior, uh, Willie Madla, uh, and some other folks there. And uh, during that time, I remember um, a very young guy, Alex Ersia, was already there. Yes, Alex Ersia. Yeah. They were starting there. Yes. Yeah, Alex was very, oh, very, very playing... young. Okay. Okay. It's yeah. very young during that time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Wow. Wow, that he was training. So, um, all right. So, you, I mean, Lee, you got the Matt Remy and all that, but I guess, you know, based on his traveling and his busy schedule and, and that. So, so what's interesting now is you were, I, I want to segue into, you know, uh, Abenico Tres Puntas. So, it sounds like you were suggested by GM Roberto to go train, or Ernesto, I'm sorry, to go train in Abenico Tres Puntas. Is, is that yeah. correct? Uh, Grand, uh, the the owner of Abanico Tres Puntas is uh, uh, grandfather. Uh, we call him Lolo, grandfather. Uh, Lolo Mateo Estolioso. Mateo. Mateo? Okay. Yes, of Antique Antique Province in uh, Panay Island. Uh, that's that's uh, in the Ilongo area also. Uh, he is a very good friend of uh, Grandmaster Ernesto. So. During Fridays, he, he comes to the gym because he goes to the church in the uh, the Nazarene, the Black Nazarene Church. Uh, he goes there every Friday uh, to to give respect to, to the Black Nazarene. He prays there, and he pass during and after that he would pass by the the gym of GM Ernesto. So uh, after a few few visits, I I meet him. And just greet him, and Ernesto said, um, "Rene, you, 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 why don't you train with, with uh, Lolo, or Lolo uh, Matteo?" He said, "If it would upset me." So the grand, the, the grand old man said, uh, "Come down to my home." So he said, "Oh, I was very happy." So that was the start of it. So Grandmaster Matteo is Tolioso, and uh, Ernesto are uh, really good friends. Good That's where I started. Yes, with the blessing of Ernesto. And, and, and nice. uh, huh? yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, for him to like do that. And then we, we got another question here. So, oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I got that one. I thought there was another one. Yeah. If, if, that, if that's a new question, Jews, just let me know. But it looks like it's the old one. Um, but let me know. Um, so, um, so when he went down there, so what's um how was meeting um Jim Mateo like and what was I guess unique about his system? Yeah, um actually 
Uh, going back to the, the personality of, of the grand old man, um, he doesn't accept students uh, by by just uh, going going to him or how do you call this uh, a walk-in students. No, he is very selective. So he has already students during the time, and then he added me. I I think I was the number nine uh, of of the students. So I'm the last one to come in, and and that's it. So he he doesn't accept really students because. I don't know. Um, it's probably the the old the old school way. Yeah, it's it's uh, handpicked, exclusive or what? Very selective. Yeah. So I was very lucky because probably because of the endorsement of Grandmaster Ernesto. If, uh, oh, sure. Yeah, right. Him suggesting yeah. it. That's, that's probably the reason why. Um, but you know, fast forward, I I was among the last three or four survivors after many years because I train under him every day, every day, rain or shine. So from the university, I would pass uh, pass by the, the gym of uh, Grandma Ernesto and, and teach there for probably one hour because it's 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 a requirement. You, you have to teach. So uh, and then I would take my, my I have a big bike during the time. It's a 360cc uh, motorbike. It's a Honda. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I would I would drive past to to the to the home of uh, Grandmaster Mateo Silioso. She would start training at around 7:30 in the evening. Yes, we would have dinner together. Uh, he, he would cook some fish and and uh, white rice, steamed rice, and then he, while while eating, he was talking about stories about his young you know, younger days. Uh, mm -hmm. During exploits, World War Two, and, and, and something like that, and then he would talk about uh, uh, stick system in Panay Island. So getting a lot of of lectures from him, and eventually after dinner he would start training for one hour and a half every day, rain or shine. I, wow. if I'm not mistaken, could be probably around eight years, nine years under him. Yes. Until he started to, you know, he's because he's of his old age, probably. His health. Okay. All right. All right. So, were you still in college at this time, or did you? Were you? I was, were you in, I was in college. Yes. Oh, you were still I, in I college. Was, okay. All right. Yes. Okay. And yeah. until until uh, I graduated in college, and until I I enrolled for for my uh, for my master's degree, I am still training under him. So. Uh, it, it became lesser when when I was I was already uh, taking up my my master's degree in in the university because of my my focus in my education. So, mm. but again, I, I I do not stop training. Uh, even no, no, right, no, training. right. You, I mean, it sounds like you kept going with it. We got just a question. Okay, Ju okay. In Negros, what was the Pulatan finger foods? You eat when you drink or delicacies during your training. How did you and your family end up selling in the area of the Tao super volcano? <laughs> and uh, okay, I guess we'll start with those. <laughs> so he's asking, um, he's, so Julius is asking the finger foods uh, or the delicacies during your training. And how did you and your family? In Hinigaran? In Negros, yeah, yeah. In Negros, um, actually, uh, uh, we we are more we are more in uh, oysters in Hinigaran. It's a very very popular uh, town for oysters, yes, and and seafood. Yeah. Uh, ah, another one is every time we train in Hinigaran, we always have this. Uh, we call this the pandisal. Uh, it's 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 a, a very popular bread in the morning. Yes. Okay. Yes, we call it pandisal. Uh, no, no butter, no everything. Just, just plain <laughs> bread, and we just, just bread. and water, <laughs> and water, because the time we we cannot we 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 cannot afford soft drinks or whatever call. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, cannot okay. afford it. No, no, no. And then um, his last question is uh, also, how did you get into the art? artisanal and world-class grade coffee business. 
It's um, Ju from Julius. He's asking, uh, how did you get into the uh, world class great coffee business? Ah, coffee. Yeah. Coffee. <laughs> ah, I see. Oh, well, uh, until today, I I am um, I sit in the board. Uh, they call it the Philippine Coffee Board. Um, I I am a director there. Um, that was in nineteen in two thousand and three. Uh, when when I received my my appointment directly from uh, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, the, the president of the Philippines, uh, appointing me uh, to sit in the board of the Philippine Coffee Board. Um, because I was prior to that, I was I, I was doing uh, a lot of of uh, uh, coffee advocacy, helping helping farmers um, get getting uh, technical assistance. Uh, bringing them to the market, helping them uh, in packaging development, and a lot of things. And uh, and I was able to connect with um, one one of the most influential organizations in in business in the Philippines. They call it the, the Makati Business Club. So I, I got friends there, you know. And during the time, uh, you know, uh, it's it's they they these people, this organization, this club. Actually, are um, I would say they control Philippine business. So I, I I was able to connect with them, and I don't know. Suddenly, I was told I, you are being appointed to to sit in the board. So since oh, then, okay. yeah, since then I'm I'm still I, I'm still uh, in the board today, and I'm actually overstaying already. I I already requested several times to to give me a replacement or what, but I think they. They, they keep. They don't entertain my my request. I don't know why. Well, they actually saw something in you though for you to be on the board. So I mean, um, we got oh Dan Loman is here and he says hi, and hi, he's talking ben. about Hello. the bridge you brought Jim Ernesto's father. Okay, can you tell the story of how you bribed Jose Presses with bread, and how your mom was a teacher? Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, it's, it's it's again it's a funny story because um, I was still in short short pants, uh, short pants. Uh, coming from school in the afternoon, I would I would I have this this bike, and uh, I would drop by at the backyard of the Presas family. But I am outside the fence. You know, so I'm just watching them like like this because they Are don't you? allow me they don't allow me inside. Yes. Oh, so you're uh, just watching from the uh, from the fans, okay? All yes, right. yes. Uh, actually, Roberto and and Cristino doesn't want me to get inside um, because I might get hurt or whatever. Because there is there is no permission from my mother. Yes. Uh, in during that time, my my mother is a school teacher and she's very very well known uh, as uh, you know very very strict, very strict. So we have this joke uh, lately that. Uh, 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 the word terror, uh, the word terror or a terrorist is not, is not, uh, how do you call it? It's not popular yet, and my mother is already a terror during that time. She's a terror. <laughs> yes, yes. So they yes. don't, they don't want me to get inside because yes, <laughs> my mother is a terror, very, very, very well known terror. But you know, uh, she's very strict actually, very strict. But but nice lady of course. So yeah. one one time. I saw them, and they, after training, they would gang up in one small pouch, and it's all pandesal bread. Yes, and it's, they would, and and and, and uh, instant, it's gone. And yeah. no, as a young boy, you know, uh, in, in my mind, ding, I said, oh, they love it, they love it. So ah, the next day when I know. came back, I have this big, big pouch full of of uh, pandesal bread, and they brought me in. Yes, they ah. let me in. Come in, <laughs> <laughs> bribing my way, sure, bribing right, my right, way. Right, right. Yeah, come in, come in. Yeah. All right, don't yeah. worry about But it. I was, I was told sit down and and uh, just sit down as an observer. And after, I think after a few days, um, okay, R Roberto told me to join them. So I started with oh, football every day. Football. Um, yeah. I'm glad football, Dan football, asked football. that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and and that was really uh, very. Uh, the, that's where. Uh, the wisdom until today, I, I have it in my mind. 
when when I was starting to get bored about the training because it's just footwork, everyday footwork, forward, backward, forward, backward, step to the side and so on, turn around, turn around. It's been weeks. So I, I asked Roberto, um, why why uh, you don't teach me the sticks? It's all footwork, footwork. You know what he said? Just do it. It will bring you to places someday. So uh, that's the wisdom still in my mind. Yes. That I'm is going wrong. You yes. still remember that. He instilled yes. that in you, and you remember it was that yes. significant. Use your footwork, he said. Use your, uh, do your footwork, do it, do it, do it. Wow. And, and uh, he said, uh, it will bring you to places someday. So How profound. Today, I'm I'm traveling worldwide. I had been to there. You go. Yes, How worldwide wow. I'm traveling. Wisdom. Oh, and he's that correct. Is he's that's correct. like goosebump stuff. You know, that's, <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. that's like good. So, um, Dr. Tim says hello, Tim Hartman. And yeah, I just yeah Manong Tim. Yes, yes, Manong Tim is a very very focused in the the uh, pressure system. Yes. Yeah, I mean, just uh, wow. With that story, though, that that's awesome. And there you are down the road. I mean, you're traveling the world using your footwork. You know, what I mean? so. <laughs> because he said, um, "Just do it. It will bring you to places someday." <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's true. That's freaking wow. So I know we we got a little um, we got a little off track, but back to uh, Gian Matteo and this the um, Abinico Trace Puntas. So again, um, so I mean, for the folks who may not know, what is that system? You know, what is it about, or what does it advocate for its methodology? What it's known for? Yeah, well, because the uh, first the the old the old uh, grand old man is uh, you know is uh, the traditional way, uh, very exclusive. So he he is always in the in the backstage. He, he, he doesn't really show up outside. Um, but the Banico Tres Puntas is the combination of Abanico and Tres Puntas. These are two different systems yes, during the time. And according to, to Grandmaster Ristelioso, he, he put them together from his two teachers. Yes, his two teachers. Uh, he mentioned to me one of his teachers is, uh, I remember, uh, Osorio, Osorio. He didn't so much elaborate about it. Uh, it it's in uh, Antiki province in Colasi, Colasi, Antiki. So uh, Abanico is uh, uh, one of the most popular system in the Visayan area. Abanico. So it's m more on a uh, largo and, and doublete system uh, with with uh, wide and low stances. And then a very, very, very busy footwork. So it, it's more, more largo, doublete, <clears throat> and and uh, a lot of of some kitty, you know, stabbings, you know, stabbings. Stabbings. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. And and uh, uh, tres puntas is more of a, <clears throat> a close quarter system. Uh, he uses elbows, uh, grabs, uh, push, and traps. Grabs. Okay. So okay. <clears throat> so it became later on when when he put them together. Uh, he called it the Abanico Tres Puntas. Now, as a classical system, I said, uh, Grandmaster, can I add to the name because it's it's a traditional system? He said, oh, whatever. So we called it Abanico Tres Puntas Classical Arni System. Yes. Classical it used system. to be Classical Baston because Baston is more more more, more of uh, the, the common name or the generic name in, in uh, Visayas area, in uh, especially in the Ilongo area. Uh, we don't mm -hmm. call it artist before we just call it baston so okay. until okay. later on to internationalize it and and uh so people would would uh, easily adapt it or uh, understood what it, whatever it is uh we instead of baston we call it arnis later part so uh and then uh, uh there is no curriculum we have a system under him we have a system but there is no curriculum but I told the, the grand old man, uh, Lolo, the day will come that uh, we, we, we have to teach a good number or, or, or larger uh, group of people. Yeah. Uh, we might be teaching from one place to another. So uh, we have to come up with, with the standard teaching. 
because mm. if it's me today, this one, tomorrow it's different. Yes. And then the next day it's different again. And then the next day we would come back to the first lesson uh, about about a week ago. So okay. um, it, it will confuse an ordinary student. So unless you have this dedication and, and focus, you you will you will lose you will lose uh, you get low uh, how do you say it? you will get off track. See? Okay. But uh, I I suggested to him um, if he would allow uh, we will start to organize it and uh, structure it into a curriculum. So okay. he, yeah, he he agreed. He agreed. So worldwide today, worldwide today is all all the Abanico Tres Puntas members can can communicate directly with the same terminology, uh, the same system, every day. Okay. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. And that's okay. Yeah. So it in, became uh, a curriculum, a standard curriculum worldwide. Yeah. Okay. And you got reps all over. I mean, you got reps worldwide, correct? I mean, representatives worldwide, right? Uh, yeah, as of today, we 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 have established branches and networks uh, in 32 countries today, and and uh, we we have new new applicants, but they are still in the process of of uh, getting into the organization, because you cannot just come in and tell I would like to join your organization. You have to pass through the the prerequisites. Yes, uh, it, it will take a few time, like. Uh, 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 you have to take the uh, the modules, yes, at least three modules uh, that is required, and these are all basic modules. Uh, and then, uh, as you go along, uh, you are going, you are get, getting information. You you will be fed with with more videos and and you know, uh, or you will be invited to seminars uh, online, uh, Zoom or whatever. Uh, yeah. Or when I visit, say I visit your can uh, a country near you. I would request you to join us, and slowly you get immersed. Yes, and that's well, the time uh, we would see that you are in. So we will issue you uh, a membership certificate. Yes. For, oh, wow. ah, that's interesting it, that you guys that you guys do. There, that. there is no walk in in the in the organization. No walk in. That's pretty unique. Okay. Yes. I like that. All right. Yes. Yeah. You just don't join. You got to go through some modules and. Okay. Yes. Huh. Yes. Uh, how how can you represent? Uh, an organization in in uh, in a particular country or in a particular uh, city where you don't have an idea what is still about except the name mm. yes so That's... by by knowing me is not enough or joining me in a seminar is not enough you have, you have to undergo like and, and take the modules wow. yeah. huh. that is it's something an immersion. It's an yeah. immersion. Yeah. it's the first time ever hearing something like this and um I really I, I like what you're doing like that. Like they have to take these and get educated. I think that's really neat. I think that's well, I like that. Um, do we got another question? Let me just see here. Got two questions. All right. The FMA World Festival. When is the next one? OK, um, well, here I'm go We're going to get to Julius, but uh, Dan's question here is kind of in regards um, and then we'll get to Julius's. How similar was the Abanico system he taught to what you saw in Negros under the presses? Uh, the, the, uh, the Abanico, in, in Negros, it's uh, Abanico Espada y Daga Palis. Yes. Uh, the similarity of this to the Abanico Tres Puntas of Panay Island in Kulasi is, is the doblete and, and, and the stances and, and uh, how do you call this? The long range. Uh, Largo, Largo. Largo, the stances yes. and the black. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, also one similarity is um, we, we don't block the, the weapon, weapon to weapon. No, there are there is no weapon impacts. Uh, it goes straight, straight to, uh, because uh, in, in most, most in the traditional system, uh, they don't block the weapon because of probably uh, it, the sticks is a substitute of the blade. Yes. So you do not strike the blade, uh, the blade to blade, of course. Right, there is, right, there is no. right. So you go straight. So probably they, they, they uh, because of that practice or that belief or that concept. So 
uh, even the twenty the sticks they they strike you directly uh, to maybe to the arms or the wrist or whatever directly to your to your body. Correct. Yeah, to go it, correct. Uh, okay. It's it's uh, that's the traditional way actually, yeah, okay. the classical okay. way. Actually, uh, and and you find this the same more common in Negros or in the Visayas area. Okay. Very very common. Very yeah. Okay. Um, we got we got a couple more questions here. All right. Uh, so easy for you. Okay. So easy for you to transition and to learn from your background now. Um, so it sounds like they're they were similar except for the uh, long range, the stances, and the blood day. But they sounds like they were pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. You know, even even in Roberto, um, the, the emphasis of footwork is is really there. Mm. So from Roberto to Ernesto, it, it became even more more uh, emphasis in footwork. You know, okay. um, um, again, uh, I, I, my, my, my friends in, in, in the modern Anis, uh, they have to pardon me also. Uh, Ernesto's uh, footwork yes. is much busier than the footwork of uh, Manu Remy. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Ernesto is, you know, uh, um, Manu Remy is a little bit stationary. Uh, his movement is uh, a little bit stationary. Ernesto's wide and, and yeah, yeah. Those, busy. Those, those feet yes. are moving. Yes. Oh, very, very busy. Um, hey, you mentioned Alex. He's here now. So oh Alex yeah, was... yeah. He was here. We had coffee about three three weeks ago. Yeah, he came. He came to my home, and and yeah. uh, he we we had we had banana and and uh, sticky rice and. <laughs> And bread you didn't and have coffee. that famous bread. There was not that famous bread. No, <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I it's uh, as another kind of bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 it was here. Yeah, Alex. Uh, so uh, okay, I just don't want to make sure I'm not missing these questions here. So okay, question from Julius is: When is the next FMA World Festival? Do you know? Uh, yeah, um, supposed to be, uh, it was already the 10th FMA, FMA festival, but because of the COVID, COVID problem, so it was canceled. Uh, the next one, the next one will be on the 2024. Yes. 2024. 2024. Okay. Yes. All right. Because we okay. do it uh, uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so on. All right, on. okay. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We do that every two years. Uh, for the last for the last twenty years now, yes, wow, it's, it's a gathering. It's, it, it's a gathering of of uh, all styles. It's open to everybody. That's why we call it FMA, Filipino Martial Arts. It's it's a world festival, and normally it's uh, it's about seven days, six to seven days. It's it's a training camp and a holiday. So normally we do it in in uh, beautiful sceneries, uh, particularly in beaches. Yes, in, in, in beach front, in beach fronts, we we train in in, in the water, uh, near near the water. I mean, sounds so, great. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's 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 a stay in training. Everything is there. Uh, the food is there. Good accommodation. Uh, we invite uh, instructors. Manu Babita Buada uh, is uh, our regular guest there. Uh, uh, Nickel stick. Yeah, they were Nickel there. Fair. They okay. taught there. Uh, almost a lot of almost uh, the big names in in uh, in the Philippines uh, in, in yeah. international instructors were uh, invited there to teach. Yes, right. it, it, no, it's, not not it's not an exclusive. It's not an exclusive festival. So 2024, Anybody it will fall in 2024. It will fall on uh, the last week of February. Last week or of February. Which may overlap on the first week of March. March. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay, so uh, I'm inviting good. everyone, and it's not it's not expensive. <laughs> not expensive. It's not a no? profit. Okay. Uh, it's not a profit event. Not expensive. Good food, good accommodation, good instructors, and uh, a lot of tours, sceneries, and so on. Uh, uh, Pardon me for the pluggings. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, it sounds. I mean, I definitely heard around. Wow. Twenty right. years so, now. Yeah. Years. All right. So I got another question here. Okay, so this is from 
Rodolfo J. Garcia. He says, good morning. Okay. The source of your knowledge of the Juego Toro uh, Posse's and their meaning since your lecture at the national team. I have been very curious about it. Are there people or styles who still practice those dueling poses? Juego Toro. Posse's. But no. It, yes, know, yes, it, yeah. Why go uh, It's 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 an old way of uh, uh, during uh, even even before uh, World War Two uh, in 1930s. Why go todo is very common among uh, settlements of grudges. Yes. Okay, uh, they have disputes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. To to settle uh, grudges, <laughs> so they do it. They do it in sticks. Yes, way go yeah. todo is. Uh, it's um, they establish the rules uh, on the spot. Yes, rules on the spot. On the spot. So okay. mostly they, they they make a circle. Yes, and then if you go out, you you lose, and um, they don't have armors. Yes, they don't have armors. Uh, it's it's a full contact, real full contact. And real then most full. of them they just put they just put a towel in in in, in the head here to protect the forehead or, or whatever because it's more dangerous. But you, after after the fight, um, if you lose, you just that's uh, it. Nothing happened. Yes. Yeah. But some people they okay. still maintain the grudges, but it's it's the their way of of uh, settling uh, their their differences. Yeah. Until today, yeah. now uh, I heard he was asking. Until today, there is, but silently because it's no longer allowed. Yes. Silent, but kind of behind the scenes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, there is one now. I I remember. Uh, in in Negros, they have this uh, called uh, uh, higutai or higtanai. Higut means uh, a rope or, a, or um, they 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 tie they tie uh, uh, the two fighters in 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 the in the waistline. Yes, uh, about one one point five uh, meters apart, or about okay. three to to five feet uh, apart. Yes, wow. with that rope. You cannot run. Yes, they call it yeah, hikutanai or hikutanai. <laughs> yes, again, it's inside the circle. Yes, okay. so no way to run. No yeah, way yeah. to run. Your only way is protect yourself and and counter or whatever. And yeah, um, they also they also establish the rules on the spot. Until today, they have it yes, in 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 the okay. in the upland area, interland. Yes. Interland. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, so Julius is asking, uh, do you have, oh, I just said, uh, I remember you said the to come back with engage the rules. Yeah, without talking. Okay. Uh, oh, GM Bram is saying hello. Much love and respect. Um, <laughs> they're all coming out for you. <laughs> um, uh, Julius is asking something, was over, or was it barbecue since he is main barbecue now? He's asking Lazones and uh, Long Long Long, I don't, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, when Alex was over there. That's Julius, Julius is asking that. Um, he's asking if you, did you have Lazones and Labanong um, when Alex was there, or did you? No, 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 no. We 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 just had uh, some fruits and uh, some sticky just rice some and bread right. and coffee, of course, and coffee. And coffee. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, for most is I I don't have alcohol. I don't I don't drink alcohol. Uh, no okay. smoking. All right. so no, yes, it was yes. just coffee. No alcohol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got that. Okay. Um, I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want I want to go into um, now. We I mean obviously we cover this and that. Um, so okay, you're on a bunch of boards. Like I mean, you know, uh, you know, chairman boards, committees. I mean, um, and you're also credited for the original version of the sport Arnie's you know soft padded stick rules. Um, how did yeah, you? Yes. Some 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 people um, may may not be aware, but you know, uh, to go back, uh, sometime in 1976 or 77, I remember, 
uh, we had this uh, we had this inter school uh, tournament under uh, all all the schools under uh, Grandmaster Ernesto. Yes, every year he has this inter school tournament, and that is where we started to develop the 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 the, uh, the, the rules. Okay? Uh, we do not have headgears. We do not have body vest or, or body protectors. You know the first the first uh, headgear is kendo, the the, the yeah, headgear oh, of the kendo, kendo. Okay. because right. Ernesto is is uh, uh, in kendo. We are in kendo, so now um, there was one time when we were outside in 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 the baseball area, and then he he tapped he tapped me and said, Thompson, look at that." So he was pointing at at the catcher at the catchers. Catcher's vest because there's a baseball, baseball. Oh, the baseball. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah. that's the first. Uh, but the first uh, training vest. Uh, I mean, uh, body vest. See, uh, and then he said, "You, you borrow one." So, and then he, he put it on, and then he slammed, he slammed the stick. To, you feel anything? I said a little bit. He, he, that's the one. He said, "That's the one." So from there, uh, because you know it's. It's a it's a school system. We have to protect the players. Um, so we we develop. We started to develop uh, a, a padded. We, we put pads. But again, yeah. because there, there is lack of engineering at that time, there is no calculations and everything. The design is is just uh, from from uh, yeah, yeah. Our okay. mind. do this do that. So you strike. Even you have this headgear, you you really feel. If it's pressure point, so <laughs> you can see, see see the stars, and then slowly we engineered it, slowly we engineered it, and we came up with with the padded stick, and then in in uh, 1978, I think we started to use it, and it slowly, uh, as as we do it, I am writing slowly, I am writing slowly, interpreting it, in, yeah. in, in, to become a standard. So that was the start, that's not the start of um, the original version. Of the draft standard that became the the standard for uh, padded sticks competition in uh, sport arnis and then it's still today, right? I mean, it's, it's still it's it's to... from basically it's from the from the the mind of Ernesto. It's not originally mine. Yes, I just wrote it down uh, because mm -hmm. I I am more a technical person during the time. I I, I right. wrote it. Yes, but it's it's the uh, I, I have to give credit to Ernesto for for that for that mind. Yeah, for that's that fantastic. Idea. I mean, yes, and then in after that, we have to develop and get away with the kendo headgear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jem Bambit Dulai, me, we we brought the prototype to to Kiapo and uh, we call it the Kiapo Raon District, uh, and and uh, requested um, the the guy is Mang Rolion. Yeah, he he tried to. To develop it and you will see it's the same headgear that is being used today in padded sticks and even in live sticks yes so, the, so more like, like the weak calf type headgear they are using it now yes. and according it. to them they they started it uh, no, no argument on that i don't mind i don't mind uh, yeah, because yeah. what is important to me is uh it's it's functioning for everybody it's accepted by everybody um yeah. there's no need to to get the credit because it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Yeah, no, well said. I mean, it's I mean, it's benefiting everybody, right? Right. So, so then what is important to me is FMA or or Arnis sport or uh, Arnis combat, whatever it is. The culture, the cultural aspect of the sport is being promoted. That is more important to me than, than to, getting like credits that. for we did this, we do that. Uh, this is ours. Uh, we have this patent. You patented it. I don't mind. Yes, yes, yeah, just help each other and promote it. Right, right. That's more important. No, I got you. So, yeah. so there's, so there's we calf, and then there's pika. Am I correct? And then there's pickup. Yes, pickup. So you got we calf. So okay, okay. So what's the? Well, I guess what's the difference between the two? Um, well, uh, we also have to to clarify this. Um, these are two different different personalities. Yes, yes. Um, there is only cooperation between the two because Wake Up he was was uh, founded by uh, Manon Juni Cañete. 
Uh, so, uh, Mordor, yes. Paris. Okay. Yes, in 1989, uh, that was okay. the first wake up in Cebu, and I I was invited to to officiate there. Okay. And in fact, I was I was the the first the first uh, chief preparer and chief judge of the wake up, the first okay. wake up in Cebu in 1989, because Manu Juni invited me to to help him uh, prepare the the, te the technical side. Yes, and then. Um, in 1986, uh, after after the new administration took over uh, from Marcos, um, they they uh, they removed the National Arnis Association in the Philippines or NARAFIL, which used to be the National Sport Association under the Marcos administration. So after his after uh, the change in the administration, uh, we organized the Arnis Philippines. Yes, okay. to replace Narapil. So that's in 1986. It was born in uh, September of 1986, and I was the secretary general at the time. Yes, and then that is where we introduced introduced the padded stick system. Yes, in 1987. So it was used in the competition. So it became wider and wider. Yes, and it yeah. uh, it became a standard for for uh, padded stick competition, and the difference now, fast forward, uh, in 2017, after 30 years, after 30 years of, of Arnis Philippines as the National Sports Association, um, there there was a call for probably for reform, yes, and I, I was again requested by a lot of people to help them out. So in 2017, um, Arnis Philippines after 30 years was replaced by PECAP. yes. Pekap is the is the new uh, is the new uh, national sports association recognized by the Philippine Sports Commission today and the Philippine Olympic Committee. So okay. it's the national sports association. Pekap is for local uh, local uh, sport activities here for Arnis. Local, so it's okay. domestic. Yes. Uh, Wake up is international. Yes. But this it could be US, it could be Europe. Yes, uh, worldwide. Yes, yeah. but these are two two different personalities. Yes, okay. the the constitution and bylaws of of uh, pick up does not does not mention wake up. Yes, and and vice versa, vice versa. Vice versa. No, vis -a -vis. Yes. So uh, these are two different. Um, it only happens that you know uh, it's the same, so that. It will absorb and, and recognize all, all the terminologies, uh, Eskrima, Kali, Arnis, you know, uh, to, to create unity worldwide and, and uh, get away with, with uh, factionalism or divisions. Because some people say, oh, what do you do? I, I do Arnis. Oh, I'm doing Kali. Uh, uh, I'm doing Kali. Uh, I think Kali is better than Arnis. Oh, no, uh, no, it's yeah. not. It's the same. It's just the spelling. Yes, yes, terminology. Right. Yes. So, mm -hmm. to, in order to 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 put them together and, and so on, we we agreed. In fact, I, I agreed. Uh, at first, I don't like it. Uh, I I I don't want to to sound it like uh, sounding like wake up. Yes. Um, yeah. Because I, we have to make clear again that uh, pick up is the National Sport Association in the Philippines, and this is not under. And their wake up, no, no, no. These are two different, two uh, different, different, different personalities. But uh, there are there are uh, wake up people sitting in the board inside wake up. Yes. Inside, okay, and okay, that are international. All right, so they're yes. on the board. So okay. this this is the cooperation. Now, when there are sports, international sports uh, uh, events, um, wake up he handles it, and uh, it's being recognized by wake up. Yeah, so there, okay. there is cooperation between the two. So it's not yeah. like they're working together. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the cooperation, uh, the cooperation is uh, uh, how do you call this? Uh, very active, very active. Okay. Yes, but it doesn't mean that uh, wake up is the superior or wake up. No, no, or, no, no. Wake up is under superior. wake up because that is the interpretation of of, of some people. So I'm I'm oh, trying to clarify it. Yes, okay. because uh, today I am the Secretary General 
of Pekka. Yes. And uh, Senator Zubiri, uh, who is also um, uh, an Escrimador Anisador, is the president and chairman of uh, Pekka. Yes. Uh, by the way, uh, Senator Zubiri is uh he won the championship the gold in 1989 uh, in jeff, jeff finder we had him on here jeff finder yeah, yeah. yes 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 uh, and, uh, in 1989 yes yeah. and i i was officiating there i was oh, officiating. oh okay yeah yes yeah, we, we <laughs> so, from from those times and until today i'm i i would say i have i have a good knowledge of, of the development of of uh, sport arnis or arnis or escrima in the Philippines. I would say so during yeah. your tenure. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's funny. We had Jeff Finder on, and then we just had the um, U.S. team on, who mm -hmm. uh, who went over there and uh, participated. So yeah, two fun episodes. But Jeff Finder mentioned obviously Miguel and back in yeah. that time and so yeah i mean wow <laughs> so uh, uh, jeff finder was a tough fighter i saw him fight yeah, yeah. i saw him fight. He very very tough miguel miguel zubiri was very young at the time he's 18 years old and very athletic very very athletic yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I, hear it was, I hear it was a doozy yeah i hear it was a tough match you know yeah yeah until today miguel zubiri is is uh you know uh, he's still athletic uh, he, a, uh, by the way, he is now the president of the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Yeah, Senate president. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yes. Uh, yeah. we, we are going to meet. We are going to meet next week. Yes. Oh, good. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm trying to. Um, a couple of people want to talk to him. They've been trying to get him on here. Um, oh yeah. yeah oh, I will so. mention to him. I will mention to him. I will mention because we are going to meet uh, uh, face to face uh, in our uh, pickup. Uh, board meeting next week. All right, I tell you what, GM, you both can come on. So when you talk to him, say you both come, see if, see if you, you know, see if you both can come on together. You know, yes, I, I, I will request him if he has the time. Uh, let's see, because now he is a very, 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 very busy. No, I'm sure he's booked. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure he's very, very busy. And um, but you're also you're on a bunch of other committees. I mean, you're chairman of this committee of that i mean so you know what other committees and chairman are you on that's fma related yeah um actually um it's it's, it's my advocacy yes and not, not not more of building my 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 federation or myself it's it's part of the advocacy because i i promise myself that i will i will uh, really help and promote uh, the filipino martial arts not only in in the Philippines but worldwide. So mm -hmm. um, by by doing so, um, I, I I create I create connections and and uh, uh, bridges with different organizations. Yes, that's mm -hmm. why uh, lately uh, two years ago, 2017, 2018, 2018, we uh, we organized this um, World Filipino Martial Arts Confederation. It's it's the federation of federations. So we, we it's it's a it's a, a union of of international federations in FMA. Uh, it has uh, eleven regional founding members, but uh, it's mm -hmm. not exclusive. It's inclusive to everybody. So at the moment we are still trying to to establish the policies uh, internal policies, so that we can we can invite people to to join. Yes, uh, it's it's a uh, the founding members um, is, is combatant, Filipino combat system of Reginaldo, uh, Lightning Scientific of uh, uh, Ben Lema, we, uh, Tita Pati Lema now, uh, uh, Caballero, we shedding it now. And then okay. we have uh, Modern Anis Tapi Tapi of the Gem Bambit Dulay, the International Modernist Federation Philippines uh, under uh, Master Paulo Motita. And then we have Kakoy uh, Dose Pares, yeah. Uh, uh, brother Chuck, brother Chuck Kanyete uh, is there. And then we have uh, Abanico Tres Puntas, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. I represent it there. And then Pikiti uh, Tiersha World World Federation of uh, Tuhon Mel Tortal. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the National Arnis Association of the Philippines. 
um, trying to revive himself um, from from the 1986 uh, uh, changes mm. during the Marcos time. And then there's another one. <laughs> they have to pardon me. A combatant is already there. Yeah, we were 11 of us. 11 of us. Okay. Ah, uh, Calis Illustrissimo. Yes. Calis Illustrissimo is sitting also in the board. So who's on there? Who's, 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 uh, who's At the moment, it's uh, Miss Peachy. Yes. Oh, Miss Peachy. Peachy again. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, she's uh, sitting there. But uh, according to her, eventually it will be. It will be the Calisius Prisimo, everybody that they have to talk. And Balintawak. And Balintawak. Uh, Balintawak rep is represented by the World Eskrima Balintawak Arnis Federation. The Webaf. Webaf. Uh, Manong Babi oh, wow. is there. Yeah, they, they are. They are. Uh, oh, so, the Webaf, uh, I think, is composed of nine major Balintawak organizations. Yes, and they, they are represented there. So it's, so it's a big organization. It's a big organization. That's huge. I would probably say today today it would go as much as about 300 club members today in in uh, probably 40 to 45 countries worldwide wow, yes. wow. Okay. so it's not too noisy at the moment because uh, we are still trying to 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 uh, establish all the internal policies so that we can uh, go out yes so it's a very big out. organization very very big Yes. Yeah, sounds it. Wow. I mean, that's uh, we, we call it the World FMA Confederation. Federation oh. of Federations. Yes. Okay. It's inclusive. Inclusive. Everybody can come in. Uh, um, it's it's uh, membership. Well, it's inclusive, but you also need a sponsor to come in. So yes. oh, somebody's got to sponsor you, and then you can get in. So if I wanted yes, to get yes. in. Like, I, uh, uh, I would invite invite you and uh, send you the the information sheet i i will guarantee and endorse your information sheet and they will process it yes so like how often do you guys meet is it like how often uh at the moment we we meet by by uh in zoom yes. zoom like so once yes. a month or uh at least yes uh sometimes okay. twice uh, twice twice a month we we discuss often the 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 members of the board we uh Actually, we are trying to get away with the, the, the word uh, uh, founding members. Uh, we just call it the lead organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Until later on, it will be open to everybody, and we can probably come up with, with an open election or whatever, so, so that oh, everybody can participate. Yes. So at the wow. moment, for the takeoff, uh, it's, being, it's being run by, by the uh, 11, 11 uh, organizers the lead organization okay. yeah. but eventually it will be it will be uh open for everybody whoever wanted to to participate in the management yes so it's a martial art with democracy yes yeah martial arts with democracy there you go yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> i like it i like it that's nice yeah, yeah. yes wow. it will be out soon it will be out soon and we will invite everybody yeah yeah, yeah i think that's matter of fact when you guys get up and going, we'll definitely. Uh, meantime, I mean, uh, meantime, it will be focused more on the cultural aspect of, of FMA. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, of course, there will be competition, like uh, uh, cultural competition, like uh, form competition, um, team team annual competition, synchronized mm -hmm. competition, and so on. Yes. At the moment, we do not talk about we don't talk about uh, uh, full contacts, not yet. Not yet. No, yes. It's not in the it's not in the calendar yet, because you see we as we are trying to establish uh, we do not want to step on the specialty of other organizations, so, so it's it's more like we want to establish friendship, not competition, not compete not with them, ah, okay. not compete with them. Yes, so we are more of of uh, uh, focusing more on the preservation of the cultural side of the Filipino martial arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it, it may even come later on with like uh, uh, cultural dances, interpretation of of uh, uh, war dances like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and and so on. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's more, fantastic. It's more cultural. It's more cultural yes. mm -hmm. than than uh, too much sport. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's needed. I think that's I think that's fantastic what you guys are doing. And, and so once a month you guys meet and before you know it, you guys are gonna kinda get it out there and uh yeah. Yeah, please let me know so I could put it in FMA discussion. I think that'd be great. Yes. Uh actually later part probably you you can invite some 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 of the uh, lead organization uh, in in uh in the process here in, in FMA discussion so it can be elaborated. But right now mm -hmm. Uh, we are starting to communicate with with uh, selected organizations. Meantime, so that they mm -hmm. can help us organize it. Yes, like Combatan. Combatan now, uh, under the legacy of uh, Grandmaster Ernesto Presas, is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is about maybe about 30 countries. Yes, it, mm -hmm. it, it's 30 countries in in their organization. Yeah, yeah I and, and we are we are we are co cooperating with them closely. Yes, cooperating oh, closely because there was there was a time when when uh, when Grandmaster Ernesto uh, passed away, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because of there was so many generals. So the, the, you, you don't even many, avoid conflicts. Uh, enough Indians, too many chiefs. <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to 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 put them together, and and yeah. and uh, slowly, uh, I think uh, it's getting successful now. Uh, they 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 meet. Uh, they will have this uh, 2023 World Combatant Competition in Graz in Austria. Yes, mm. next year, 2023. Okay. So I we expect about 30 combatant countries there. So they, they're, they're, they're coming back into unity now. Yes. I, I'm yeah, sure no, um, yeah. Manung team will be there. Manung team will be there. He's one one of the promoters of, of uh, oh, I mean, uh, 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 supporters of uh, the Ernesto Presas legacy. Yes. Well, Amantini? Uh, uh, come again? I'm sorry, you, you were saying... Manung, Manung Timi. Yeah, Manung Timi. Okay. Tim, Tim Hartman. Oh, oh I was going to say... Manung Timi. Uh, Manu Tim oh, okay, okay. When you were saying... Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It makes yeah. sense now. Okay. Yeah, so, the, yeah the Ernesto Presas, yes. Oh, that's, yeah. that's fantastic. So, do I think I want to go... Um, before we, you know, we, uh, we go, is um, you? How's the kids thing going? You were developing that whole kids program, the gear and everything. Oh yeah, uh, I was, I was, uh, I wanted to, to, uh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Sure. You got the family out. Oh, uh, there. Uh, my my son was uh, moving his his car to the garage. So the door oh, is okay. open. I would like to apologize for for the, for oh, the noise. Oh no, no worries. Yeah, um, going back um, as another advocacy of the Abanico Tres Puntas. Uh, um, after two years and a half, now we are starting to to go back to the face to face, but in a controlled controlled uh, uh, number of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we divided the the session into four groups. We have the Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Uh, it it is more or less now somewhere like about <clears throat> more than eighty people, eighty people training. These are young people, very young people, ages eighteen years old below, uh, down to seven years old, and uh, we, we 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 keep continue we continue training them. And before I go further, uh, I would like to thank. I would like to thank the the uh, help of FMA uh, discussion, uh, and then uh, of course uh, Brian uh, and and then uh, Brother Paolo. Uh, yeah, Paolo that's Rubio right. We all did that together. Helping. Paolo. Yes. Yeah, that was fun. Yes. You when when, you, when you, yes, you did a, a benefit uh, fundraising the for for the yeah, kids. The yes. Uh, the equipment is already there. And it will be published uh, as soon as as soon as we are allowed by the government to go back to our original original venue, so we can okay. lay down there. We have already we already have the headgears, uh, everything. Uh -huh. The equipments are there. Uh, the, the the floor mats are. Uh, uh, we are, we just need to advise the supplier to deliver it because we do not have a store room for that. So it might get wet or or you know. Oh, damn it. They're, they're exposed and whatever. Because 
we were uh, during the covid covid uh, time the restriction is uh, very very high that uh, the venue that we used before is owned by the government uh, was closed as close mm. to public so now we are training actually we are now training in, in an open basketball court and, and some some uh, uh, a little narrow alleys in in, in the area so yeah. we are not still allowed to get inside the the inside, facility yeah. where we used to yes and um, before i go further i would like to thank to thank uh, the the lead of fma discussion for for helping us on this and uh, the program the program is being is being uh, copied by a lot of organizations also here oh, in the so glad they, they saw it. because i discussed it with them uh, they mm -hmm. call me and I, I tell them how we how we do it, how we yeah. do it, and uh, they're copying it. Yes, in yeah. in Panay Island they they are doing it also. Uh, the Lightning Scientific Organization of of uh, Manung Ben Lima he, mm -hmm. is doing it, and then Kakoy uh, Dosipares is doing it. Yes, they have a very very active uh, uh, grassroots program. So yeah, like farm, not, not really copying it. They they the the concept. The concept is very good, yes. Because you see, uh, in a few time, uh, every one of us in in this in this uh, generation uh, may fade away, yes. And we have to leave this legacy to the young people to lead Absolutely. in behalf of us. Yes, we have yeah. to develop young leaders this this early. Absolutely, amen. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like yes. if we want these. If we want these arts to grow and perpetuate and go on for decades, we need the younger generation, especially here in America. We're yes. having that, and um, you know, so I'm just so glad over yes. there. Building, take off. yes, building new leaders, yes, mm -hmm. building new leaders that will that will continue the the legacy uh, for the next generation. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. so we we don't we don't uh, get scolded by the young people in the future. That what did you do? Uh, yeah, you did why you do this sort of this, way? Did that, why did that. you do anything? Yeah. 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 So it is work. our responsibility, not just an obligation. It is our responsibility to to start young people to to replace us in the future. Because in a few time we will start to fade away. So you know, we need leaders to do that for us. I totally agree with you, and I'm so glad it's taken off over there. We have to do that again. When you guys are able to get back inside, we could do another raffle. If you guys, if your program's growing and you need more gear and all that, I would be happy yeah. to run, do it. Yes. One, one at a time, uh, as soon as we complete all of this, because we still have to liquidate all all, all the donations, all the help from people. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have to, uh, finally, we have to publish it. Yes, not necessary all the names because some people wanted, they don't want their names to be mentioned. So probably we'll make it more general, but uh, it will be published as a liquidation of, of of all of all the help coming from different from different people, different organizations, uh, particularly for FMA uh, discussion for uh, doing the lead, <clears throat> and also uh, Brother Paolo Rubio doing the lead for that. Yeah. So a lot of people, a lot of people help, and it's there. Is there, uh, and then uh, as as we go along, uh, we would like to encourage all other organizations to do it. Yes, mm -hmm. we we have to develop young leaders. Yes, not necessarily uh, uh, for for getting good skills. Yes, we we develop them first, and the first stage is leadership. is very important. Leadership that will develop them and come up with good discipline, and and and, and everything follows. Everything follows. The skill, uh, the skill in the sticks, the skill in the weapon will will just come in, yes, because yeah. of dedication. But what is important now is develop the young. Oh, well, folks, definitely an internet interruption. At any rate, that was music to my ears what he was talking about. Hopefully, he will get back. Huh. Ah. All right, well, at any rate, um, 
I'm hoping he'll come back. We were kind of on the tail end of things anyhow. If worst case scenario, he doesn't come back. Uh, but what can I talk about in the meantime? Yeah, he's just lost internet. So I'm going to X him out. We'll see if he comes back. Definitely worth waiting a few minutes. Um, so there is a guest this Sunday, Tom Pena. And unfortunately, the name is escaping me who he's having on. Um, but anyway, I think that's Sunday night. I will be away in San Diego uh, meeting one uh, Brandon Ricketts. So, but I'll be back Tuesday, and I'm sure I'll have somebody during the week, Wednesday or Thursday, as far as a guest. Who's coming up the rest of the month? Daniel Bernas. And the month is coming on. Who else? Let me check the list here. Uh, what's I got floating around somewhere? Yeah, we got some uh, Daniel Bernas. Um... Lalo from Mexico, great guy. He's coming on, leads big things down there in Mexico. Real great leader down there for promoting Filipino martial arts. Brian Canada, Chris Durbaum. Uh, who else? Who else? Still working on the female sparring, just wearing her hair back from a couple. Alan Chambers will be coming on. Uh, Rebecca King. I'm sorry, that's who's this Sunday. So, uh, yeah, Tom. Pena will be doing that one. Uh, woo, 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 woo. The internet, I hope you yeah, have. I know. I hope you tore you apart. Not like Joy Division. Yeah, not like Joy Division. Love of Terrors Apart. Uh, Paolo. Hey, hey. Talk to us about where you like to see FMA discussion five years from now. Oof, man. That's a great question because I'm just trying to think if the momentum will go even carry us a year from now. So basically, we would have to get creative, really creative. So I could tell you some goals like short term within the year. So and those goals being I, I'm shifting the format for guests who particularly guests who have already been on their bios have been covered that. Um, they would basically just come out and showcase their stuff. So their interviews wouldn't be as long. They'd be 45 minutes, an hour. They're coming on, they're just showcasing what they do, uh, you know, their material. Like maybe, for instance, example, we bring Gian Bobby on, he just does demos. No bio, he is just showing demos. Uh, we could bring you on, Paulo, with the um, boudoir. You guys would just do demos. So that's where we're gonna head. And, um, and tours. I'm thinking about geographic tours. Are we back? You're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and suddenly, I don't know what happened. Uh, I was sound like an um, internet glitch. I'm gonna guess. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I think so. I think so because your screen went blue, and that usually that is indicative of like an internet connection. Usually. I see. Uh, yeah. yeah so, I, I tried to check. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. Um, so we're talking yeah. on the kids. How it's going well. You're just waiting to get back into the facility. You're, right now you're you're kind of on a basketball court, but things are looking yeah, good. Yeah. When when it rains, because it's now a rainy season here in the Philippines, so we have to suspend training, uh, and we just give them uh, we just give them assignment what to do. Yes, because uh, <clears throat> at the moment I, uh, we have three. Uh, no, no, we have two venues for that. Um, one is the Rosario facilities where we have more than 80 students. And then we have the Amadeo facilities in the main facility. Uh, we have lesser students there, about uh, 20 plus. And uh, uh, we, we, we continue training. And uh, you see, one of the most important features there is it's uh, more for developing the young leaders. And free, we don't, we don't collect. There is no, there is no uh, tuition fee. There is no membership fee. Just, just, just join. But uh, you just have to bring your your parents' consent. That's because these these are minors. Yes, yeah, minors. Are so they see the parent. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. So sense. most of the time, uh, what we do is we we invite the parents to to come and join us. So what happened is um, the parents, especially the mothers, uh, they they also form their own group. Yes. Uh, the Abanico so Tres Puntas uh, Parents thing. Association. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yes, so the because they are there. 
we have occasions they bring food yeah so That's the, the federation right? doesn't spend anything they they answer mm -hmm. for for uh for the food and when we have uh, events and they answer for the transportation yeah because they, 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 they we were able to develop the the parents camaraderie yes oh wow yeah yeah uh, Actually, that's their, that's their idea, not mine. <laughs> yeah, they just came together of... because they meet almost every day. Uh, I mean, uh, every time there are trainings because their 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 kids are are, are uh, training. So the parents were waiting for 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 the children, and what happens is they probably get get closer and closer to each other. Yeah, they start talking and they find out. Yes, they every day, and, and they, they share talking. they share snacks and so on oh. and and pack. Later on, uh, they became the mother, the Abanico Tres Puntas uh, parents, uh, something like a club or um, uh, an association. It's it's an informal group. Uh, yeah. Looks like it's, it sounds like it's going fantastic. And it sounds like it's just going to get better and better when you guys get yeah. back in your facility. And, you know. and they make it easy for, for us, uh, the, mm. the, the instructors, because they're helping us. Uh, we, we, we don't collect, that's why. But the only the only uh, requirement there, the prerequisite, of course, is uh, you must be you must follow the the dress code. Yes, uh, we have we have uh, uniforms for our beginners, and we have uniforms for senior students. So you you, you differentiate them them all, and and uh, oh, <clears throat> yes, and uh, most of the time, uh, the the parents are actually they they offer whatever they can they can help. Like we have events. Yeah. We said, oh, uh, what do we need? Oh, we need food. We need this. We need the uh, logistics. Oh, they offer. They offer cars. They offer their uh, their their services. Oh, we need food for this. We have visitors. Oh, I'll bring this. I'll make adobo. I'll make rice. And the other one, they make this, and we put them together in 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 one table. And you see, uh, you see, it's, it's like a birthday party. <laughs> yes. So it sounds like great stuff. It sounds like it's going really well. And yeah, yeah, and I ha am I'm happy with whatever is happening. Yeah, they're helping helping me a lot build build the the, the federation because yeah. at the moment uh, the uh, it is it is my my dream to continue and spread the legacy of uh, the grand old man Mateo Estelioso, not only in the Philippines but worldwide, and and and, and it create. You're doing it. Yes, and create create um, <clears throat> some sort of of uh, a name for him, mm. because I always tell my my students, uh, because some people would ask me, you, you founded a banico tres puntas. I said no, I am I am the caretaker. caretaker. It's because I remember a long time ago when he said, uh, Rene, uh, you take care of a banico tres puntas. See? Mm. So there was no appointment except uh, take care of a banico tres puntas. So when people ask me. You are the founder. I said no. It's owned by Grandmaster Mateo Estelioso. I am the caretaker. So mm -hmm. when you are when you handle like in your country, one one senior instructor is called the caretaker of the country. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, we don't call them chief instructors. We call them chief caretakers instructor, caretaker. or supervising well, instructors. Yes. Yeah. So you become like the caretaker. Person. Yes. Yeah. Caretaker like will include everything. Protect. Protect. The curriculum from from abuse protect the federation from abuse protect yeah. the students and protect the legacy yes protect the legacy i like it. caretaker I, I do like that and it sounds like you couldn't have picked a better person you know and you're obviously you know for other countries too you're leading by example um wow uh, this is just great stuff um yeah i really you know i appreciate you coming back on this has been you know wonderful yeah. I'm just so glad the kids program there is, is doing great. And I'd be honored. Yeah. FMA discussion would be honored to help you again. Yeah, you're road. part of it. You're part of it. You you provided uh, an additional pillar for that. Yes. Yeah, well, we're happy to do it, you know. So, yeah. Um, Apollo, too, who was just here, who said hello. And, um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, yeah I, I really thank you guys for, for doing that. Uh, uh, I, I was a little bit silent. Uh, a few time because there is nothing to to report. Yes, because, no, no, because, no, there is, because yeah. of the restriction, it was it was good now that they allow us uh, slowly for face to face training. But again, um, 
they can we cannot go beyond 20 but sometimes we violate it we go as much as 30. <laughs> yes. but you know we, we have to spread them uh, spread them yeah. apart because the local government the, the local community government we call it the barangay government you know uh, they they will see us and and they will mm. they will get scolded so we we try to avoid being uh, driven away later on or suspended from using the uh, yeah, disallowed from using the the government facility because right now we are using an open basketball court yeah. yes yes and and some small alleys connected to the basketball court to to accommodate everybody yes. mm. so it's really funny every every week they 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 post it in in facebook uh, and you know <clears throat> because uh, i i wanted to i told them to uh, create awareness that uh, we are starting to go back slowly. Yes. Okay. Yes, and and with the we just had <clears throat> three months ago we had our national election, so there are there are lots of of uh, realignment here, uh, sports people, uh, local government administration, and so on. So uh, same on our side, we are also trying to adjust with the new administration, with the new leaders here, new mm -hmm. mayors, new uh, officials here slowly mm -hmm. but again uh, they are our friends we don't have a problem with that yeah i'm Please. just so glad it's working out and you guys are gaining momentum and, and you know so forth well, I, I just think it's yeah it's just wonderful to hear that you know what i mean and we're just glad we're able to help and be a part of it you know so um but uh yeah so talk to senator miguel if he's up for it i'll bring you both on Yes, yes. Uh, I, I will. I will try to mention that to him, uh, and hopefully he he gets he gets a a time uh, the time to to fit in because at the moment he he was elected as uh, like again uh, uh, Senate President of, of the Philippines, so he's probably very very busy, very busy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I know we could do it. Like you and him, come on. Then we could bring Jeffrey Finer on. Those two could like reminisce about. And you were there. Ah, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I still have. Time. I I still have that uh, video of, of their uh, last match. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Could it. you imagine the three of you on? They could reminisce about the match. You were there. I mean, that would be that would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I I will I will try to to find it in the file. And and okay. probably share it to you because it's not it's not uh it's not uh restricted because they posted yeah. it uh, actually in 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 Facebook so it's it's an open open file now you probably okay. just give them credit for that yeah so, well yeah talk so, to them, yeah we will let you know as soon as uh, I am able to talk to him uh, personally because we are going to meet uh, I think next week uh, I'm not sure yet. Because there is no no uh, formal invitation yet, and we are waiting okay. for that. Because we 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 talk every month uh, through Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting. But now mm -hmm. he said, uh, let's let's meet uh, face to face uh, in his office yeah. in the Senate. So okay. normally we start we start the 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 meeting, the board meeting at around seven or eight o'clock and conclude at around one in the morning yes it's a very long discussion always oh wow yes. Yeah, yes. Is long. yes a lot a lot of things are being discussed yes a uh, lot of debates a lot of, of uh, light arguments and at the end of the day at the end of the night uh, we agree in one direction yes. that's nice well that's what counts that's what counts wow yes. yeah talk to him and let me know and, and we'll go from there and uh Obviously, this this won't be the last time we see or talk to you. So, you know, I, yes. I appreciate you coming on. You know, thank oh, you, yes, Jim. Yes. Anytime. So, yes. Salute you. You know what yes. you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, be, we, and, before uh, we conclude, we uh, we are concluding now. Unless you got something, yeah. Unless you got there was something. Yeah. Um, before we do that, I would like to thank again uh, FMA discussion, especially oh, you for. Yeah for uh, bringing me in uh, after a few time. Uh, and then uh, I would like to thank all our uh, listeners here. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, <clears throat> lastly, I would, would like to continue asking everyone to please support the promotion of the Philippine martial art. Uh, 
um, not only in our locality but uh, worldwide. Let us create bridges uh, uh, than than uh, than uh, cutting cutting ties with with the conflicts, whatever. Uh, it is our dream to to unite everybody. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, the with the word unite is already overused, but is that that is the only word that we can use to keep us going. So, uh, if there's anything that you need uh, from us here in the Philippines, please please uh, feel free to communicate to us. Uh, I can I normally spend at least two hours uh, in in Facebook uh, in Messenger. It's it's always open there because I get messages. You can send me also uh, questions, whatever or whatever you want, you want here from the Philippines. Yes, you you want to visit the Philippines? Just contact me. You want to meet some some other grandmasters here or some other organization? Please contact me, and I will connect you to them. Yes, I I always I always bring uh, people to refer them to other to other grandmasters yeah. it, because it's. It's so one way of, of promoting also those those uh, people who are uh, less known. Yes, yes. We, we are happy. We are we are known much better known worldwide than than some other people because there are more more lots of, of good good instructors in the upland areas. Lots of them uh, less known, but you know I, I I was I was in communication with them. And I, I I was trying to to bring them in to 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 the center like like what we have because these people they deserve to be to be known and and share mm -hmm. their art uh, they are lesser known but I would say they are spectacular instructors very good good yeah, system good seems... styles yes and lots mm -hmm. of them yeah and and uh, I I wanted to help them out and and come up and come forward. And join yeah, us. So, anybody who is interested to communicate and connect with them, just just let me know, and I will connect you to them. Uh, personally, I will bring you to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, well, thank you for that. And um, again, yeah, we appreciate you coming on a second time, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the future regarding you know the center and yourself, and uh, hopefully we can make it happen. You know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dean, for this opportunity yeah. again. Um, Yes. I'm happy. Yeah, long overdue. I'm glad we did it. Please, oh, please thank the family for assisting with you know yes. the. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, the, the family is very healthy. <clears throat> yes. Uh, by the way, um, people were worried. Some were sending me messages about the uh, most recent earthquake. Uh, oh, from it, yes, it was uh, really devastating. But it it was uh, a localized uh, earthquake. It's about 400 kilometers from from my place. So everyone here is safe, uh, but oh, uh, you know we are sad for some some of our mm -hmm. uh, Filipino families down there, up, up north. It's up north, yes. But uh, the government is uh, helping them a lot. Oh, so, thank. oh good, good. Oh, okay. They, they are better now. <clears throat> better now. It's rainy season here, and uh, we we have lesser time to go around. And and uh, after this, I'm actually going going uh, to to uh, my uh, fighting cock uh, facility. Yes, it's it's uh, also one of my <laughs> my, my okay. hobbies. Yes, yes, oh. fighting cock martial art. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, fighters also. It's not allowed in the United States. Yes, but it's legal okay. in the Philippines. Yes, it's a very All big right, industry. Well, to, very very big industry. Yes. Wow. In the Philippines, it's uh, helping our economy actually moving. It's, it's part of our uh, part of our agriculture because it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, just uh, uh, livestock raising. And at the same time, it's it's uh, cock fighting is is a sport in the Philippines, and mm -hmm. the government gets revenue here. So you know, it's like a sweepstakes or a lottery you know, when people. Yeah, lot, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, it's uh, getting good revenues for the government. We we need we need uh, good revenues. You need the revenue, yeah. Yes. So it's wow. it's helping, and and uh, it will also some some of this uh, goes to to sports. Yes, okay. the, the taxes that they get from there actually uh, is channeled uh, through the Philippine uh, gaming 
Gaming Corporation, which is a government a government uh, controlled corporation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think half or more than half of, of the revenue that the, the they call it the PAGCOR, Philippine Gaming uh, Gaming Corporation. Uh, majority of the revenue goes to to the Philippine Sports Commission. Yes. And that is where they it is being channeled down to the trainings of athletes and their exposures to international competition oh, equipment. Wow. Right. Yes. That's that's how we do it here. So yeah, yeah. No, where we got right. Okay. Yeah, you mean, so some right. people they call it gambling. Well, the, the good side there is the revenue that goes back to, but the, revenue to the benefit of, from of people, okay. sports. It goes to sports. Yeah. It's right. not wow. actually gambling. We consider it a sport. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So just additional knowledge for, for some people who, who yeah. don't really understand it. Yeah. That's why I support it, because I see where it's going. Yeah, you see where the revenue is going. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. So... Well, all right, so thank you again. Uh, Dean, yes, thank I you again. Really and, uh, this. Hopefully we'll yes. be in touch. You take care of yourself. <laughs> yes, so before I close, I would like to thank, uh, in behalf of, of the Philippine Scream Kali Arnes Federation, uh, uh, headed by uh, Senate President uh, Juan Miguel Zubiri and the World uh, Filipino Martial Arts Confederation uh, for uh, this opportunity. Thank you very much, and also for the uh, from the Abanico Tres Puntas family. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dean. Mabuhay right, from the Philippines. Yes, you're you're very welcome, and you take care of yourself. And hopefully, we'll be in touch. Yes, thank you. All right, bye, GM. <laughs> bye bye to everybody. Thank you for listening. Sure. Bye bye. Oop, I don't know what I did there. Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. All right, <laughs> take care. Um, wow, that was a good one. I'm so glad we got him back on. Probably should happen sooner or later. But uh, yeah, so you guys already heard it's coming out next. I believe Rebecca. You got an right idea. Rebecca King. I hope. Yeah, I think. Well, if I'm wrong. Uh, but anyway, Sunday night with Tom and all that. So, all right, folks, thank you for jumping in, and we'll see you uh, next time. Take care. <laughs>